psilocybin mushrooms or magic mushrooms. I was 27. Yeah, so actually at the time, so this was about um, a little over a year ago, I was in a relationship with a man um, and I was actually very anxiously attached to him. So I had a lot of anxiety and a lot of fear at the time. I was definitely moving through just a lot of healing, trying a lot of different healing modalities um, and definitely making progress, you know, and feeling more settled within myself. Um, but I just remember feeling very anxious and just journaling every day a lot of fear narratives and a lot of fear beliefs um, over my life. And I was very scared of psilocybin. I remember years ago saying, I'll never touch a hallucinogen ever. Um, so a year ago, you know, over a year ago, I never would have expected to be doing psilocybin. Um, what actually brought me to that point was a place of complete and utter desperation and humility and um, need because my relationship I was in, where I was very anxiously attached into, ended very abruptly and it shocked my whole system. Um, and I spent two days crying some of the deepest, you know, pain I've honestly ever felt. Um, feeling like I just lost my entire self through that relationship and all these dreams I had projected for the future of what I wanted for us and, you know, wanting a family, wanting marriage, wanting all these ideals, right? All these like foundational ideals in our society um, and realizing that I, I completely lost myself and I had a really good friend reach out to me on day three of my grief. I was literally sitting in the bathtub full crying and she texted me and said oh my friend um is having a ceremony at her home tomorrow morning if you're interested you should reach out and of course i'm like let's do it i'm in the most pain i've ever been so i just said yes and i took the leap um, which was very very unlike me because i was very scared of anything that could take me, you know, out of my mind or, you know, what the, a lot of the fear narratives are around psilocybin. Oof, an experience, man, that like doesn't even sum it up. <laughs> um, right away I was just, I just remember feeling like, whoa, I'm here. Um, I'm not even gonna think about it. I'm not even gonna think about why I'm here. I had no intention going into it um, because I was so trapped in my body and in the pain and grief I was going through and the shock. Um, and so I took the chocolates. I remember they were chocolates and they tasted good and I just ate them, ate them down as quick as possible. Um, and right away, because I hadn't eaten in like over two days, three days, um, they hit my system within like five minutes <laughs> and I remember just feeling complete and utter panic because I've never felt anything kind of take over my body and mind in that way before. Um, the most surrender I think I've ever felt. So I panicked and I got up and I remember you led me into a bedroom, into a you know safe and private space where I could just be and kind of center myself again know that I'm safe, that I'm okay, um, which didn't help because I was so, <laughs> I was in so much panic and I was still trying to hold on um, and cling on. And I was led back into the main living room area with the group and everyone I remember walking in, everyone was doing Qigong. Um, I think that's the word. Uh, and I just remember being like, I can't do this right now. This sucks, I can't do this. I can't be, I can't be normal, I can't be, anything other than like just this like mess on the floor so i remember laying down you put the blindfold over the music started everyone settled in and right away i was faced with hell at least what my idea of hell is and i couldn't escape it i literally saw faces 
all around me um, that looked to me like demons and I was raised in the church and to me they were very like just some sort of presence, a fear presence, a demonic presence as the church would call it. Um, just utter fear around me and there are these faces like these clown faces with big sharp teeth <laughs> like literally it scared the shit out of me but like you can't escape it and i saw this with my eyes open i tried closing my eyes and being like oh, and i take blindfold off and that didn't help like nothing was like letting me escape this pain and i finally got to the point where i just broke down and I surrendered into it. And I remember just viscerally crying the hardest tears I've ever cried in my life. But it felt like all the emotions in my body were just completely leaving me and it felt like it actually had to happen. Like it felt like I needed to release that. My breakup wasn't on my mind. Nothing was on my mind um, other than fully letting my body do what it needed to do in that moment, which was to grieve. And not just grieve a breakup in a relationship, but like literally grieve my entire life, actually. My entire childhood, everything that I've been through. And like, my mind didn't understand it, but it didn't need to. And I think that's what I saw too, is like, our mind really doesn't have to understand what we're going through and what we're releasing, even though we really want to. Um, and so I surrendered to the grief. And I remember screaming and, you know, making noises I'd never made before. And just like, I didn't give a shit that anyone around me could hear this or was affected by it. I remember opening my eyes and like taking the blindfold off and trying to grasp reality around me, but it didn't work out at all. So I'm like, this is the place I'm meant to be is just here with myself and that's okay. I'm allowed that space. Um, so it really was this ebb and flow of, I'm in hell <laughs> and there's no escaping hell and I'm gonna surrender to it. Um, I got to this point, I wanna say it was honestly probably like a couple hours in, like a good amount, like I feel like my body had been hit by a train. Um, where the faces around me started to fade away and I started to connect into something greater than myself and for the first time that day I started to feel peace and joy and I let myself connect into it there was no other place to be and to me it felt like God source creator um, but something you know that completely held me and had me and loved me and like chose me and I remember specifically this moment I started to laugh and I started to realize that fear isn't real and I started to see that the more I'm connected here the more that fear quiets and goes away and the faces aren't even real right and so I laughed and I laughed and I laughed and I laughed and I just let myself laugh and like I'm totally not in control and I love it and I'm like this is awesome I'm not in control oh my god um, and I just had so much joy like that's the only word I can use is like the purest joy I've ever felt in my life um, I heard a voice at that point oh and I the faces also this is pretty cool the faces around me morphed and I started to see archetypes of angels and of like Egyptian goddesses and like all of these different archetypes of like good, right? And they were all very protective of me and I just felt really good around them, um, but not attached to them. And so the more I'm feeling this joy and this presence, I hear this voice, this like audible voice and it's saying, rise, 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 rise up and the rest will fall. So I literally did that. I got up and I remember like sitting like this on my knees and like flapping my wings like an angel and feeling literally like I was Jesus. I was like, holy shit, I get Jesus now. <laughs> Jesus did this, Jesus rose and like everything else fell. Um, and I got up and I never went back down. And like the rest of my experience, um, Wow, there was so much actually, it's like all coming back to me. Um, but from that rising point, 
it was just pure joy and pure connection. I actually sat up against your windowsill. Of course, it's sunny that day and the sun was coming through and I was just feeling the sun on my skin, like, oh my God. Like the sun is like the most physical representation that we have to God, source, creator. Um, and I was just in love with the sun. And I'm like, I wanna worship the sun. Like, this is like so good. And I just felt that in my bones. Like the sun is so pure and like, no wonder we're always like alive in the sun, right? Um, and I sat against the windowsill and I turned around and I was facing everybody in the room and everyone was in their own sphere completely, um, all different journeys. And I looked at them with these new eyes and I was looking at them with these eyes of just love and non-attachment. And in that moment, I felt for the first time in my life what non-attachment was and that I had been freed of the chains of anxious attachment and avoidant attachment, which is huge. And I just saw, I was just getting flooded of downloads and visions and just, it's like complete and utter clarity coming to you the whole time, but you're not even trying. You don't have to try at all during this, um, which is the beauty of it. And it's already here with us, right? And I just had these visions of my relationship come through where I was trying to climb onto his lifeboat and like I saw, that's like what we do, right? We like see someone and we're like, let me hop onto your boat. Oh my God, like I'm sinking, I'm sinking. And we try and hop onto other people's boats and it just ends up we both sink. And that's what would, what was happening in that relationship and um, all the other relationships I've ever had in my life since I was a child, you know, my primary attachment. Um, and I just remember looking out at people, everyone in that room, feeling this love, feeling this non-attachment, and also feeling zero judgment for them and feeling like I am them, they're me. And then all of a sudden I see this like web, this grid everywhere. And like from everyone's crowns came this web and I saw everyone connected and everyone a part of the same home and the same source that we're all in. And it was so beautiful to see that you know, the illusion of that separateness that you always hear people talk about, but to actually like see it with these new eyes was really powerful for me. And to feel that everything I felt for them, all the love I felt and all the acceptance and non-judgment was actually what I needed to flip back and see for myself. And that was my one of my missing pieces. And knowing that I am always connected to source, knowing that I'm always vertical, it's not just horizontal with the people around us. It's something always higher that we're connecting into, um, whether we're conscious of it or not. And it's just us choosing to see it. And so after seeing everybody around me, I remember even looking at this woman next to me who was, I just thought was the most beautiful thing ever. And it's like, you see people's inner beauty. It's not, you're not even seeing their outer beauty. That wasn't even a thing. I literally didn't notice people's external. It was like, it's your internal and that's what matters, which is so cliche, but it's like so true. Um, and I remember seeing her and like seeing her lineage and just seeing her on her hands and knees, like in this prayer position. And I was like, holy shit, she is a powerful fucking person. And like, I just felt her power. And like, I went up to her and I was just like, oh, like I see you. I, I could see her whole family lineage and I could see all of the people, the 4,000 ancestors that came before her who were all in that same position that she took that from, that position of surrender, humility, love, acceptance. Um, sometimes even that desperation where we're crying out because we need help and that we know we can't do it on our own, right? Um, and then I saw myself pull back because I realized, oh, everything I was also saying to her, I needed to also give back to myself. And I saw that it's always a two-way street with ourselves in relationship, which I'd never seen before. I always thought, oh, if I just give, 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 and like compliment everyone and like point out everyone's awesomeness, then like, I'm gonna be good, right? but it wasn't ever that. And I saw that I was giving so much to people around me that like I wasn't doing that for me and that I was actually losing my power in that. 
And so much of that is about losing our power um, when it comes from that place of thinking that this is what we need to do to be a good person and to be loved and chosen, and worthy. Um, you know, which are all promises that were given to us before we were even born. And it really felt like a remembering of that um, and a coming home to that. And it wasn't like I was finding anything through this experience. It was like a re-remembering. I also remember at one point, I think I had just started to kind of come down from like fully being like very in it. And like, I started to like get a little bit of energy back and like, I wanted to move my body. I'd like to go outside. I want to go be in the sun. I was so excited to be in the sun. And I was out there for a hot minute because I was literally worshiping. All I wanted to do was worship. I was like, oh my gosh, I just want everything to be a prayer. Every movement I made was an actual prayer to the divine. And like, I'm like, this is what life's about. Life is our prayer. This is literally our prayer. And I'm like, I started doing yoga, I remember. And I'm like, man, I get yoga now. Like yoga is a prayer. Like everything is just worship for source and worship for the light. I think that was another key concept too, was the light and seeing that the light, like we're all keepers of that light and that I could see like some people had a greater, um, I guess, purpose in it and some people had forgotten it, like keeping the light. And I just remember this term keepers of the light kept coming up and I'm like, I'm a keeper of the light. I'm a keeper of the light. And then I grew up in the church and Christianity and I've had a lot of pain through that experience. A lot of pain um, and a lot of just hate and anger towards the faith all of my life. But it was like all of a sudden, all of that hate, all of that anger for Christianity just dissolved. And I was shown that like churches and faith of all kinds are keepers of light. They genuinely start as keepers of light and that everywhere you go is gonna be light and dark. And that the hate and the anger I felt towards that was only fueling more darkness within it, within that portal, within that group of people, within that religion. And that the only way to get out of that is to dissolve that hate and anger and dissolve and alchemize that into love for them and love for the faith and love for the intention of the light. Um, Cause that's what fuels it. And I broke down crying, I remember at that point, because that's just a huge theme of my life. And actually from that moment forward, I decided that I wanted to continue back onto a path similar to how I was raised with Christianity, but I wanted it to look different. And I was excited and I just had all these downloads of like a vision for my life within the faith again, but also not within the faith and being able to merge faith and not have it be just you know, a binary one-way thing. Um, so that was really powerful. And I actually, like, the next day, I, like, put my cross back on because um, I just saw it. I just saw the archetypal representation of Christianity and of the cross and of, like, resurrection and all of these beautiful archetypes, like, that came through this experience. And, wow, I was raised being taught that just in the form of this beautiful story with these people and these characters. Um, at one point too, I remember it was uh, time for dinner. It was time to eat. At that point, I was starving. But the funniest thing is, I remember I had to pee really bad. I remember my stomach felt like just a completely empty well. And I was like, I don't want to eat. I don't want to pee. I literally was like, this sucks. I was like, holy shit, I'm in a human body. No, I don't want to have to be in this because I want to like stay tuned into source. I was like, I can't do this because it's going to take me out of source. <laughs> literally all I wanted to do. I get people who have near death experiences now where they're like, I don't want to come back. That's how I felt. I was like, nothing can take me out. Nothing can take me out. Um, so I tried to hold, like postpone that as long as I could, postpone the eating and the pain, which is hilarious to me because that's not how I am like in my day to day. I'm like, oh, gotta eat, gotta eat again. Like very tied to it. Um, and I remember when I finally did come to the table, there's this beautiful meal. It was actually like one of the best meals I think I've ever had. Maybe because I was like literally three day, you know, fasting, but it was so good. It was like this amazing homemade soup and like just fresh food. And I remember sitting at the table in just an energy I've never been in before where I just didn't care about 
Who do I need to interact with? Who do I need to talk to? Do I need to be a part of this conversation? Like, I didn't realize how attached I am to people and like their perception of me. And literally I just sat down just like, so in my own power, so in my own energy for the first time, like just so in tune to me and to my connection to source without this feeding me and filling me this whole time. Um, and I remember just like slowly taking a spoonful of the soup and it was like a prayer. I was like, oh my gosh, like gratitude, like just full gratitude. And I'm like, I'm always gonna be this way. I'm always gonna like cherish food and cherish moments like at a table with family and friends and community. And um, it's like every moment like slows down. And I'm like, wait, this is how I'm meant to practice my life. And it's okay if I don't, that's what being a, a freaking human is. But like, just feeling for the first time that like, I'm okay right here. I don't have to please anyone. I can just be in my own energy and be in myself and be connected to source, the, the one that fills me, the he who goes by a thousand names and no names at all, right? Like, it's all okay. And, um, yeah, I'm just like remembering it all. Like, it's just coming back to me right now. And, it really is, uh, it really is just a way of being. Like you really can't explain it all fully, which is okay. I don't think it was meant to be explained fully. And I think everyone is gonna have such a completely different experience in it, which is the coolest thing. Um, and I get, I totally get why people are scared to do it. A hundred percent. Like that was me, literally. Um, but hey, you take a desperate person, right? And some, who knew desperation could actually be the, formula, right? Pain and suffering can be our formula for growth and exactly what we need to grow. And like, I look back and I'm so grateful for the pain I was in and the suffering um, because it brought me back to me and it brought me back to source um, and to seeing the web of life and that we're not alone, that that's a lie, right? We're never alone. Even when we're alone in our room or wherever we are, um, aloneness is just a concept. It's not real. It's not reality. 